All right, so in this video, we're going to discuss permutations. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to define a permutation as ways of ordering objects. And it's going to clear up once I show an example. So for instance, we have 3p3. And the first number is how many objects we're talking about. And the, third num and the second number is how many we're placing in a row. And we just need to see how many total ways we could arrange uh, these combinations of objects. So here's our three objects, a, b, and c. Here's one ordering of it. Here's another, again with A in the beginning, then I switch the B and the C. And I go through them until in an orderly way, now I'm gonna do the B's at the beginning and now the C's at the beginning, until I have all the possible combinations of um, three objects in a row, chosen from three unique objects. And uh, so this is what 3P3 looks like and because we have only six combinations, we have the answer is gonna be six. 3P3 is gonna be equal to six. Um, 3p2, on the other hand, means we start from the same three objects, a, b, and c, but we pick only two at a time. And so here are all the combinations that way. a and then b, a and then c, b and then a, b and then c, c and then a, and then c and then b. So in these cases, again, 3p2 is equal to 6. And this is just to show you the difference between... Um, the, the first number is always going to be bigger than the second number. Um, but it does make a difference. Of course, the number isn't the same in this case, but here's a third example, 3p1, and that's ways of uh, putting one number in a row. And this is just going to be a, and then b, and then c. So 3p1 is going to be equal to 3. And so by listing all these combinations, we could find out uh, all the ways we can order objects. But this is going to take a long time if we get to bigger numbers, so let's try to find the number of permutations without listing them. And again, we have 3p3. Let's do it this other way. We have three numbers, and we want to find out how many ways can we put them in an order. Uh, well, first of all, notice that we have three choices for the first um, selection. So you can pick any one of these to put in the first box, and let's pick B. I mean, why not? Then when that's done, we have only two choices for the second box. So let's pick A. Why not? And then we're only going to have one choice left for the, for the third box. And when we have a situation like this, we're always going to multiply the choices together in order to get our answer. So in this case, we have 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 6. So therefore, 3p3 uh, is equal to 6. This is the method of how we're able to generate six different uh, possibilities. And this is the same as 3 uh, factorial. That exclamation mark is called a factorial. Uh, and it means that you start from the number that it, that's by the exclamation point and you keep on cycling down, multiplying by numbers until you hit 1. So, um, therefore, whenever we have npn, in other words, 5p5 or 6p6, we, the answer is going to be n factorial. And as an example, 5p5 is going to be 5 factorial, which is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, uh, which is equal to 120. Lastly, let's take a couple of uh, slightly more difficult examples uh, in which the second number is lower than the first number. For example, 5p3. And here are our five um, objects, a, b, c, d, and e. And again, we want to put in these objects in uh, an order. And so we have three different spaces because we're picking three of them to put into an order. How many choices do we have for the first box? We have five choices. How many choices for the second box? Now that that one's taken out, we have only four choices left. And for the third box, we're only, only going to have three choices left. So this is the process um, by which we can generate a three objects in a row. We start with the first box, we have a certain amount of choices for that, then cycle onward. And you might notice that the number of total ways to do this is going to be 5 times 4 times 3, which is equal to 60. So 5p3 is equal to 60. Now how to do this in a more general setting? Well, suppose that you had npr, where n is the number you start with. Then, then you're going to have n multiplied by n minus 1, multiplied by n minus 2, all the way until you reach n minus r plus 1. This might seem a little confusing, um, but notice that we're going to have r total factors. In other words, um, whatever the second number is going to be uh, in, the fact, in the permutation, that's how many times we're going to multiply things. For example, 7p4 is going to be equal to 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, in other words, we have four total things that we're multiplying because the second number in the permutation notation is four. Another way of writing this, and this is again written as npr, um, is n factorial over n minus r factorial. And as you might remember from the last section, n factorial refers to the entire permutation if you had, say, 5p5. And n minus r factorial is basically what you're canceling out 
you're canceling out all the different ways you would have been able to put the remaining uh, objects at the end of that order. For example, in this case, we only put three objects in order, uh, and we had that A and the D still lying there. The bottom just gets rid of all the different ways we could have put the remaining numbers if we chose to do that. And to show how that works for 7P4, notice that um, the formula implies that what we got, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, is equal to 7 factorial over 3 factorial. Um, and when we write it out, we get 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1. And after we cancel out the same things on both the numerator and the denominator, we're left with what we had originally, just multiplying uh, four distinct factors. So the key thing to keep in mind, um, the first number tells you where you start out from. So your first number you're going to multiply is always going to be 7 or 5 or whatever the first number is in the permutation notation. The second number tells you how many times you multiply it, you know, going down every time. So 7p4, you start with a 7 and you multiply it by four total factors going down once every time. So we have 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. And uh, the special case, 7p7, is when it actually is just uh, 7 factorial because we go down all the way until we hit um, 1. So this is it for um, permutations. In the next video, I'm going to do combinations, which is basically the same thing as this, except that the order of a combination doesn't matter. In this case, we count the same thing, but in different orders. And uh, in combinations, we do not.